all we have is self-control. We may demand trying to control others, but we were not given that right. But if you have self-control and you begin to learn what others need, if you know what you want and you know how they think and how they're wired, then you just need to speak it in a way they can hear you. Hey, what's up? Welcome to Life in Your Show. I'm your host, Jason Wojo. On the Life in Your Show, we help people make more, work less, and live awesome lives. I am joined by Polish Peter, my brother from another mother. What's up, dude? Hey, man. So I'm looking forward to this episode because yeah. um, the guest on this podcast is going to be talking about a tool that she's using and I've used in my coaching as well that actually helps uh, people, anybody. I don't care where you come from, your backgrounds, how old you are and who you are as a listener and what you got going on in life, I think that tool is going to tremendously help you to see how you actually love as a person and why that matters. Yeah. So we got Kathy Neubauer online. She's one of our life and her coaches. She actually started off as a student with us. She became a coach many, many years later, and she's rocking it out now, helping people, helping couples uh, really understand how to connect better, how to understand how they're loved, how to understand really how to, how to bring your relationships and your own kind of feelings about things to the next level. And we're going to talk about how you love. Uh, it's a book out there now that she's she's uh, dove into quite a bit and, and is using those tools with uh, life and her students as well as others. And so I think you're going to really enjoy this episode. Let's go in right now to our interview with Kathy Neubauer. Hey, Kathy, what's up? Welcome to Life Your Show. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Glad to so, be here. Oh, it's gonna be awesome. Like, so you, Kathy, you are what I'd consider to be like, kind of like a resident expert within life and air. You're a coach for us. And I keep hearing and people singing your praises as to how great you are with helping people figure out the challenges and the relationships and even, even their own personality styles. I feel like this is really kind of something you've zeroed in on and, and really quite frankly, like really uh, done a great job with understanding these things and helped people uh, understand themselves, their spouses, their relationships, how they can be better with communicating with other people. And so I want to kind of dive in a little bit. Uh, there's one in particular that we talked about prior to the show that you feel like has been really revealing and powerful for some of your from some of your students that you were going to share with uh, our audience. So tell us what is what that is. Yeah, so there is a, a book out there. It also comes with a workbook. It's called How We Love, and it's by Millen and Kay Yurkovich. And uh, when I, this book was actually introduced to me by um, one of my students that happened to come across it, and the more I dove into it, it was very, very clear that we have, you know, I, I talk a lot about wirings and some of the things about how we're wired, and that doesn't always change. It's just our level of health changes within those wirings. But this is actually childhood wounds or imprints. Let's use the word imprints. Some people don't like to think of it as a wound, um, but there's imprints that happen when we are younger. And, and by the time we're age five, six, and seven, you know, in those early years, we are just taking in data and we're taking it in very personal until we hit the age of five. And it's not until after we get older than five that we can have some intellect around it. Um, and so everything that happens, whether it's happening to us or around us, we're absorbing. And everybody is doing that through their own set of filters. So parents say, I raised you all the same way, right? But the interpretation of that life was very different. And so in that book, they talk about six love styles, one being a vacillator style, um, the pleaser style, an avoider style, a controller style, a victim style and then the secure style. And the objective is to get everybody to a secure style. And the reason that um, we don't usually have a secure style, so there's like 45% of the people have scored in the high teens, you know, 15 being the highest, um, they score in the high teens. That means that particular wound is playing havoc on their life in their jobs, in their businesses, in their um, relationships with their family, friends, spouses, and kids. And they don't know it, right? They just don't recognize mm -hmm. that this has happened. And some have more than one. And so we come into, the, into our relationships in our own silo of 
concrete beliefs of how we receive affection, attention, and connection. And <clears throat> so, and go ahead. So, so let me let me let me pause you there for a second. Like, and so I haven't read the book, so catch me up on some of the background here. Okay. So, what I understood is that you know, at a young age we all kind of make decisions based on what happens to us on what love means, what it looks mm -hmm. like, how it translates, how we feel, but also, so, but, but is this, does this refer to how we express love or how we receive love or both? So it's how we're interpreting it okay. towards ourself, right? Okay. How we go ahead. Do, do we, I'm sorry. Do we, does this mean that we, when we interpret it, does, are we also more likely to love others that way because we interpret it a certain way? No. Separate? In this case, we try to do everything we can to feel more love. And so we adopt certain methods of attempts. And so like the pleaser will start to do everything for the parents or whoever it is they're trying to get this attention from. They will start to try to make them happy. If they're happy, they'll love me. Right. Mm -hmm. If they're happy, they'll see that I'm trying and they'll love me or they will um, demand more attention. So the, the vacillator style is very emotion style when it comes to love and affection. So they will um, buy things for their partners or buy things for their kids. In a sense, they want to receive love as a transaction back. Right. And so when they don't get that same reaction that they were hoping by their efforts, then they feel like you don't love me. It's a black and white style, right. right? You don't, you don't love me. If you loved me, you would, you would appreciate what I do for you or all of that kind of stuff. So it's more their reaction is how to get it. And so an avoider style will say, my emotions don't matter. I just have to do acts of service. If I do acts of service and it's separate from the love languages, but in the avoider, they will just do things for people, but they won't tie any emotions to it. They just kind of shut down. And then the controller tries to take control of it, right? He tries to kind of run the show, lay down the ground rules, that kind of stuff. They take control of their life so no one can hurt them. And then the victim feels like nothing they do is going to matter. So why try? And so they are more about what's happening to them in kind of a poor me reaction. Mm. Like everything's, you know, it's never going to get better. Nothing's ever going to change kind of a uh, reaction. And then the secure one can give and receive love very well. And they, um, they know what they want. They know how to communicate what they want. They listen, they know how to um, give what the others need. And so it's a much more stable style. And so am I correct in, 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 in believing that it, the, the, the stability, the stable version of this is kind of the ascension goal of all of the other styles so that yes. eventually you're in this place. So everyone, the goal is like, this is the top of the pyramid and you're trying to move your way up. Yeah. Um, how does... Well, it somebody... seems like, it seems like, hold on, it seems like the first five are like the negative kind of ways well, they're, of... they're the Im wounded imprints right and then the, the last one the secure is like the, the good one that's what you try and get to right right oh, yeah. it's all tied to how someone is feeling comforted and attention so think about it how many times as parents do we get stressed out if our kids are crying for no reason and we tell them to stop crying or go to your room or go away when instead we should get down at their level and ask them what what's bothering them. What are they crying about? I want to understand you, but I can't hear you because you're crying too loud, right? Like actually embracing and comforting their pain or, or a child falls and they cut themselves and we say, you're tough. Get up. You're tough. Walk it off. Walk it right? off. Yeah. You're fine. You're fine. <laughs> and so they learn that they can't have emotions. Mm. And so it's not intentional of parents to be doing that. It's just generationally, that's the way it's been handled, right? right? Especially with boys, right? Especially with little boys. And so they don't know what to do with these emotions that they're having. And so sometimes they'll have tantrums 
with the emotions because I, I've heard uh, my grandson say once when I was asking him, asking him why he acted up and he's like, at least I'm getting attention. Mm, right. You know, they will find ways to try to get what it is they're needing, even if it's in a negative way. And so now Go ahead. you're an adult, right? Yeah. You've, you've done, done the same thing your whole life, right? And so you've lived in your own little world, in your own little silo. And now your partner's silo is coming in with you and they had their own thing. Maybe it was a pleaser or whatever. They had their own thing. And now you're together in your sandbox, right? Throwing sand because you you think it's going to be different. Right. And so when you start to recognize you have this implicit memory of that need for love and attention and how it was constantly abandoned or how your feelings were never appreciated or never valued, you have that history memory. And so as soon as your body feels that same thing again, those energies come from the past and make it exacerbated in today's world, right? In today's experience. Hmm. And I have seen so many people, you know, I've worked with a number of people on this and first thing you have to do is be able to accept that it exists and know that it innocently happened. Nobody did it to you. Now, some children are neglected, right? Some children are abused. Somebody intentionally did that to them based on their own problems. But many are just parents living, trying to survive life. And the interpretation of this is happening within this child who has no logic, right? They can't think, they can't think about it. So when you said we make a decision, well, it's not really a decision. It's a feeling because they don't know how to think logically to make a fair decision. It's just an adaption that they feel. And now this feeling makes me feel unloved, abandoned, whatever, whatever their story is that they create. Right. And so does this, is the path for each of these different versions towards stability different for each person or is it the same at the core it's it's unpacking it's it, like is the path the same or like this is this, is there a different story typically that is associated with one version versus a different one um and how do you start moving in that direction yeah so the book the book does a great job telling you how especially the workbook how to work through and identify where it happened. And, and it is not reliving. It's just identifying. How did you, how did you receive that? How did you receive comfort? Like, tell me a time when you felt like you received comfort and the majority of the people with the higher wounds, they cannot remember. That doesn't mean it didn't happen. Like for the vacillator style, they did receive it, but then it got taken away. So maybe they had a parent that was, working and the they'd come home and they'd play for five minutes, but then they'd be gone for three days for work. And so it was inconsistent. And so theirs is a little bit different, but the actual objective, the workbook is the same work with different stories, right? The healing is slightly different based on which one happened because you have to break the method. So for like a vacillator injury, they ruminate a lot. And so they make up a big story about why this person is trying to purposely hurt them. Mm. So one of their actions is to break the rumination, change the story, come into reality of what is real and true in this situation. It's not the past. It's not mom and dad. This is a new person, right? So you got to break the cycle. And for, for the pleaser, for example, one of their healing things is practice developing boundaries and know what it means to um, serve in a healthy way. It is not to gain a reaction. In all of these, we need to get healthy so that we're not expecting something else from somebody else, right? And so it's really to be able to gain um the ability to know that my feelings matter and it's okay to share them and I cannot make somebody else happy. I can serve them and do what I want to do to serve them, but I am not responsible for their happiness. 
Right. And do you feel that, so each different style likely has, like I'm guessing, like for instance, a vacillator, like you mentioned, maybe there's a, there's a, 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 um, a basket of things that are likely to perhaps perhaps have happened that might lead this style. And then similarly to one of the other styles, like there's probably, Hey, this is most likely some of the things that you might've experienced. Is, is there that level of characterization is this where someone can look at, because, because to your point, if someone doesn't remember, mm -hmm. there's gotta be some breadcrumbs or clues that we can yes. lead down the path to start to understand what might've uh, affected yeah. them. Is there anything like that that you've seen? So, yeah. So in the book at first, at first, like in each chapter for each style, it starts out with sentences like statements. Have you ever felt this? Oh, okay. And it goes through the statements and these are statements we're feeling today. Hmm. They're also what we felt growing up, but they're statements we're feeling today. And so as you identify it, now you know what standard of rules or standards of concrete beliefs you're developing because you feel these things. And so that means you expect certain things because of them. And it also then says if you develop this pattern, this is most likely what you experienced as a child. And it's different for each one. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Do yeah. you think this also has some influence over who we choose as a partner? Like either because number one, we see the same thing as we grew yes. up and we want to try to fix it and, and fix it the second time around, or yeah. we avoid it and try to not do that. Like some, some yeah. sort of mix thereof perhaps. Yeah. And so, so I have seen many styles with all, you know, each style with all the different styles, but each one has a reason why you attracted. That's also in the book. It says you attracted to this person because so an avoider can attract to a vacillator style because a vacillator initially pours on a lot of love and affection. And the avoiders never experienced that before. It's new, it feels good, it's exciting, but they don't necessarily know how to give it back because mm -hmm. they avoided their emotions. So they're attracted to each other and it feels good. And the, the vacillator's happy because he's making that person, he or she is making that person smile and begin to enjoy life. And they're saying, I've never felt this way before, right? But then you get further into the relationship and marriage, and then all of a sudden, the vacillators looking at that avoider saying, you don't give me the same thing back. Right. They're like, I don't know what you're talking about. What changed? Well, it's because they have the vacillator puts them up on a pedestal and expects them to fill this void that they have. And the voiders like, I don't even have my own feelings. How do I handle yours? Mm. Right. They don't know that so logically, but this is, this is what's going on in the battle of the, the different styles. And so the vacillator and the avoider are probably as far opposite as you can get as a disc D style and an S style, right? They're just opposite traits. Mm -hmm. um, but the objective is to get each of them to that happy medium where avoiders are not afraid to experience their emotions because you need to have some emotions in order to have relationships. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it's just flat. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so in order to do that, you have to be willing to face the emotional up and down of what emotions do to us. Right. And so the, the thing that I work with couples on is it's really hard to do it with just the two of you. Now, some people have tried, but when you're sharing these feelings that haven't been shared before, often they land offensively on your partners. Yeah. Yeah. So the way I, I do it is I have them send their responses to me and then I mediate the conversation. So it lands well on both. Got it. Right. So they can talk to me and, and the other partner can just listen. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and so to me that works the absolute best, or they also offer, you know, seminars and weekend getaways and that kind of stuff too. But um, when you tie all of those kind of things in with your wirings, now you really understand yourself. 
you know what you're trying to work on to heal, you know where you want to be in your best Enneagram behaviors and your best DISC behaviors. And so now you're in control of yourself. All we have is self-control, mm. right? We never were given others control. We may demand trying to control others, but we were not given that right. But if you have self-control and you begin to learn what others need, now by giving others what they need and your ability to know what you need, it kind of goes back to my story of the five chairs, right? If you know what you want and you know how they think and how they're wired, then you just need to speak it in a way they can hear you, right? Yeah. If you know what their wound is and you know what yours is, you have to be able to merge that together to be the healthiest for you. Because once we get to a point where we want to serve and honor and be the leader and the role model of our families, now we are respected willingly. Now people are looking up to us and we feel great about that. So people say, why do I have to change? Well, because you're the one that's miserable, <laughs> right? Yeah. And it's really, it's really not completely changing. It's adapting to new behaviors and letting go of imprints that are not serving you. So before we get back into this episode, I want to share something really important with you. One of the things that me and Bojo do here, I've been doing this for over probably eight, 10 years now, is we've been running these events called Gear Life Getaway. And in these events, you sit down and you work on your entire life. You work on your vision for your entire life. And we literally dive into every single area of your life to show you, to help you create the vision that you truly deserve. Because if you notice from the episodes that we've been recording here over the years is this vision is so important. It's probably one of the biggest missing elements in anyone's success. And if you look at all the successful people that you see in life, they have some form of a vision that they follow. So I want to encourage you to go and check out one of our events. We do these events throughout the year. We have tens of thousands of people gone through these events, created their vision, and you'll be shocked to see what kind of a life they're able to create because of that. So head over to lifeonair.com. That's lifeonair.com. At the top of the page, there's a tab called events. Click on that tab and you're going to see everything that you need to know about that specific event, when it's held, where it's held, and how to get there. Now, here is the cool thing. Because you are a listener to our podcast, we want to give you 50% off coupon. Actually, we'll give you a little code that when you go to the checkout page on the right side you're gonna see a promo code area put this word in there podcast podcast hit apply and you're gonna get instantly 50 percent off coupon head over to the page don't delay do it right now before you go and do something else all right let's get back into the episode kathy you've you spent a lot of time learning all of these different modalities Mm -hmm. right disc enneagram five love languages how we love how does someone and by the way i i don't know what your feelings are on this and if whether you feel one is more appropriate in okay. some circumstances versus another or they're all important or someone hey your biggest bang for the buck is here how does somebody start incorporating these tools when there's there's so many of them like how how do you how do you look at this and how do you view this yeah so I, I like them to take the assessments of all of them okay. and, and when they know just how, how it operates, like I will go through these with people and they will say, oh my gosh, that explains so much. And they begin to accept it. So just learning where they fall in the, the disc and the Enneagram is, is necessary to me because that is your wiring, but I don't think you have to study it as much initially as you do with this imprint that's causing havoc, right? The Enneagram wiring comes up and it's your reactionary stuff. But when you have this imprint, that is exacerbated tenfold. So if we are willing to accept our imprints and want to do something about it, because we weren't responsible for what happened growing up, we were innocent in that process of us interpreting, right? 
but we are responsible as adults of how we're going to handle that today. So if you picture a mirror of your little child from when you were five years old, if you actually got a picture out of yourself and you put it on your mirror and as an adult, you're looking at that child and you can see even one of your sadder pictures would be helpful, but you can see that there was some pain in that little child and that you're the one that that little child resides in, right? Those memories are within you. And so if you looked at it every day and say, we are good, we are together, we are, you know, I will never abandon you. Like we are Mm. good and we don't need these old rules anymore. Mm. We are safe because we are in control. Because the reactions are because of a feeling of insecurity as it relates to connection, attention, and affection. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, Kathy, like, you know, to Virgil's question and to your point is, I think a lot of these tools, they basically help us to be aware of who we are. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because most of the time, even for my own walk, I mean, for the majority of my life, I now that I know what I know, basically on those different tools, and I don't, you know, I've used the tool that you were talking about here in my own coaching and my other ones that I actually use, but... Now that I know what I know, I'm aware of who I am. And then yeah. I can be aware of who the other people are in my life. So what that allows me to do is when I'm having a conversation with my wife or with my kids or with my students or with the people around me or at the events or even even Vojo here. I mean, I don't know if we can fix him up, you know, if you got something that we can throw in here to fix him up quickly. <laughs> but when I have conversations with people, I don't see them like I used to, right? You know what I mean? Like you see them in a completely different way and it eliminates a lot of the judgment that we tend to have with people. So that tool alone can actually have a tremendous impact in your own life to be able to go and have relationships with people. Yeah. So, um, So here's my question for you is, as you're going through these tools and, you know, let's say a vacillator is with a pleaser or, or... Mm-hmm. You know, let's go with that. I think um, as they are learning more about this and listeners are like this, they're sitting here and they're thinking, okay, you know what? I, from this conversation, it sounds to like I could be a vacillator, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what do I do with that now? Where do I go with that? Is it just a matter of me knowing or do I need to do something or how would you, what would you tell them? Yeah, I you definitely want to take action on that awareness Um, because it's hurting you and it's hurting those around you. No matter which imprint it is, it is hurting you. Either you're being silent and internalizing the suffering or you're being vocal and externalizing the suffering. Either way, it's causing impact. And so we, our emotional imprints are impacting everyone around us because of the way we react and respond to it. So if you go to howwelove.com, they do have um, the different styles. So like for me, when I'm working with a couple, if they're a pleaser and an avoider style, um, uh, the Yurkoviches, Kay and Millen Yurkovich, they have created um, um, handouts, documents that you can purchase um, that actually say <clears throat> how these styles work together. And in that handout, in that PDF document, it will say, here's what each of you are feeling. Here's what each of you need to do to improve. Here's what attracted you to each of each other. Here's how you can exit this crazy cycle, right? Mm -hmm. Because it becomes a pattern, a cycle pattern, right? Right. And you have that pattern with your children too. If it's a pleaser is a pleaser, they are putting their children higher almost than their own spouse or partner. They are wanting to make sure that they know how much, you know, they, they are loved, but the way they do that is not always through comfort. They buy them things, they serve them, they put them first, Mm -hmm. which causes its own little set of imprints, right? For a vacillator, they might bring their child home something or do something for their child. And they say, give, give me a hug, give mommy or daddy a hug, like give me a hug. And the child's like, no, I don't want to. Well, then they feel rejected. Mm -hmm. And so then they'll say words like, you don't even love me. You don't even love daddy. You don't even love mommy. 
right? And so these words are sticking in these children's brains. Or if they hear their parents talking this way, it's sticking in as an observer. So what we do is spread our emotional imprints All to the place. environment around us everywhere. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it makes impacts. And then <laughs> the funny thing is, we don't have control without awareness and intentionality. We don't have control over our emotions, yet we expect our children to. We expect our children to control their emotions, calm down, stop it, whatever we do, because it's bringing up emotions in us of frustration or you know disdain because they're not behaving, right? And so sometimes we yell. And then we tell them not to yell, right? We are doing these reactional things, expecting more of our children than we do of ourselves. And so the more that you can recognize what you do and why you do it, mm -hmm. you gain self-control. Yeah, and you can actually do something with it. Yeah. yeah, I just did a class last Saturday um, in relationship to a, the vacillator style for the holidays. And... And uh, it was really interesting because because they um, they were able to see it individually in person and and go through the process and be able to accept the wound, right? Go ahead. Yeah. So, Kathy, as you're talking, I'm 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 thinking of something here, and I'm and I don't know if they, correct me if I'm off on this, but like with the familiarity and a and an understanding of this, is it possible to read other people in how they accept this and then adapt how you, I, I'm wondering if this is like a level 2.0 or if it's completely invalid, it's one or the other, right? It's either completely garbage or it actually works. Can you read other people and then adapt how you show them love to match where they are? Or or are you basically enabling them at that point? You're not allowing them to grow because you're kind of putting a bandaid on that wound. like. Yeah. Yeah, so what the way it talks about it is creating a um it it, it doesn't want you to give all in cuz you don't want to stay there. You don't want them to stay there. You don't because mm -hmm. you can't win, you won't be enough, right? And so it it teaches you how to get your style in control and create a boundary about what you do with them. Got it. Okay. Right? So so I got a question for you because listeners, for instance, hearing here, you know, and talking, us talking about this particular conversation. So they're probably, you know, someone who's into the growth, right? And they're asking for, um, you know, okay, how do I grow and all those kinds of things, but maybe their spouse or their kids or whoever it might be, they're completely not interested in this. They think that's, you know, like, I don't care, you know? So if I have a spouse, for instance, who's not interested in, in any of this, and I am, is this still something that's helpful for me to be able to go and create a better relationship? Let's say my relationship with my spouse is, you know, dying, you know what I mean? We're mm -hmm. heading for divorce. They're not interested in this, right. but okay. So I figure, okay, I'm a, looks like I'm a pleaser or, and she's a vacillator or he's a vacillator. How do I actually make this work? Yeah, I, it is hugely beneficial because if you can get secure, now you learn how to work with that style and there may come a time what happens is the more the attacks happen right mm -hmm. the more the lashing out happens no matter which way it is it puts a brick on the wall it takes them a step closer to the door right no matter which style you are either you're closer to the door because you don't feel like you're getting enough love or they're close to the door because they feel like they can't they can't give you what you need right and so if you work on yourself and get yourself healed, now you're not feeling your own um, insecure part anymore. They might not be capable. And it teaches you, are they capable? Mm. Are they capable of giving you what you need? And is what you need realistic? The level in which you need it, is it realistic? So once you get to the secure, where it's a more balanced within yourself, you see the world differently, right? Yeah, so so here's my other thing about this is that 
if I go and learn more about myself and in what, who I am, and you know, I figure this part out and now I am shifting how I communicate with that person, right? How I am, you know, receiving love and things like that. I think what ends up happening, the dynamic between you two shifts. So, because I think in a way, these, the way we love, they, you know, feed off each other. Right. Right. So if I shift how I operate. All of shift, a sudden, the shift. other person doesn't shift the same way. Yes, I said shift. Okay. Thank you. Just, just so be clear. So you're clear here, buddy. Okay. <laughs> so and I can say it. Okay. You can do whatever you want, but I'm going to still say it. So anyway, so it will literally shift how you guys operate. So mm-hmm. then the other person is not going to fight so much for getting that kind of love, that kind of attention and things like that. So I think slowly things, th- things are going to start turning. Am I on the right path here? Yeah. So one thing or the other is going to happen. I've had people come to me and say their partner is not working. And so we get them to just work on their own on it and start doing it. And then I get the other partner sometimes calling me saying, oh my gosh, they're more disconnected as as ever. And then I go, what are they doing? Mm-hmm. And then I show them the, and they sometimes will see this for themselves, but this is the dynamic. First, it shifts and the other person that's not doing the work doesn't recognize what's happening. And so when they share that with somebody, so if they share it with you guys as a coach or something like that, you can say, oh, that is better behavior than she was doing before because she used to fight. What you're what you're missing is the fight, mm-hmm. right? And she's just not willing to partake in the fight or he's just not willing to partake in the fight anymore. So pay attention now to what you're observing. And if it's about the fact that she's not engaging in the battle, that's a good thing. So now how do we get you to be able to accept that for yourself? What do you need to do so that you don't feel like you have to engage in the fight? Right. And then you suggest what they need to do, right? Yeah. Um, Kat, the last question, I know we're we're kind of running a little long here, but it's so valuable. And this is kind of, I want to kind of piggyback on what Peter said, like at the end of the day, like whether it's this tool or one of the other tools, Mm -hmm. how do you overcome, and maybe this, we have, maybe we might have to save this for another episode, by the way, because this, this could open a Pandora's box. Okay. How do you actually get your spouse to put down their defenses when they've been hurt? They've been disappointed. You've promised change in the past. It hasn't happened. Here we are. And to get to, to actually give this a chance or give any of this stuff a chance. Like how this to me is, is where the, where the, like the, the rubber hits the road. Cause if without this, none of the tools will have any effect. Right. Right. And I think the, I think the biggest thing is the whole thing about change and integrity of the word, right? It's whoever says they want and they are going to change or it's going to be different is that they don't stop doing it because the person that is so hurt and wounded, their defense stays up until there's consistency. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The other thing is they have their own things they should be working on, but right now they're only blaming you. Right. And that that's the hard part, right? Because they have some healing to do too, but if they don't see consistency, they will never trust that it's going to be different. And what happens to the person trying to do the work is they get tired of trying because they're not seeing, they're not getting recognition for the approval that they're changing and that they're doing good or that, you know, and so they start to give up and slack back. And the biggest thing is for the person that's really trying to not try for them. Don't try to do better for your partner try to do better for who you want to be Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. because this is something we want to stick. Right. If we're doing it for someone else and that someone else leaves or, or disengages, then we stop doing it. That doesn't make us a better person. And so it's almost as I've had some, I've seen some where they win them back and then they revert. Yeah. And I'm like, Yeah. yeah, Why did you revert? Well, that was, that was the honeymoon. That was the courting phase. That was, 
I'm like, no, no, no. You're misunderstanding the whole thing. Right. The whole courting phase and that whole stuff that people think they have to do to win somebody over. That stuff needs to keep on going. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. It needs to become who you are because you honor and love that person. Got it. Right. Yeah. Or honor and love that child. Right. right. We try to do good parenting behaviors because we've learned something new, but our child's not responding. So we stop doing it because in our mind, it's not working, but we haven't given them the ch chance to catch on. Right. We have years of logic <laughs> that we're dealing with. We're not giving them chance to adapt to the changes. And then we revert back to yelling because they're still not listening. Right. We have to give them opportunity to grow with us. And we have to maintain ourselves as the parent that's going to stay stable in our emotions. Got it. Right. That makes so much sense, Kathy. I'm so grateful for you as a coach. And you, I know you're making incredible uh, strides in, in, in helping so many people. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you so much. Man, here's a question that I really want to know. I didn't have to ask Kathy. Does this also affect like who you choose for friends? Because there might be something going on here that I I'm, I have a blind spot or something in my life that somehow you know I've paired up with you and and now mm -hmm. I got to figure out like what's what mm -hmm. what, what kind of like what kind of mm -hmm. story I was telling myself here or what mm -hmm. kind of wound I had from my childhood. Mm -hmm. Well, that just tells me that you're so screwed up that nothing can change. I mean, you, you, I think you're the anomaly in this whole entire test. You know, yeah. and right. because it's like a mixture of all of them put together and the whole uh, secure thing, uh, and you, you're just lost cause, man. I would uh, not even yeah, attempt. Okay, well, forget about know. me because that's where that's, that's, there's no hope there. Let's talk about like this is a strategy and a tool, man. I I love the use of of these kinds of practical tools for people to get to understand themselves better and how their relationships maybe um, have played out over the years. Because I think I think these things have patterns, like right, so. Like she talked about when we're when we're very young, we we kind of create these these uh, impressions. I wouldn't. She said, you know, mm -hmm. not not necessarily decision, but we have these impressions that kind of shape our perception of how love is shown, how it's felt, how it's experienced. And I bet you, if you look back, there's probably a, a historical repetitiveness to these kinds of things showing up in all the relationships you've had, right? Like it's not just one off. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, because, I mean, it's how you start to interpret the world, you know, around you. And then you, you know, she talked about the feelings, the emotions that get tied to it. And that's yeah. why it becomes such a strong pattern in our lives. And if you think about it, in all the relationships that you may have, guess who's the common denominator in them? You know, it's you. And how you love is going to express itself on how other people see you and how you interpret that love and how you actually manage, you know, in those relationships. And that goes from everything from personal relationship to family relationships to business relationships. I mean, that how we love, because I've used this before as well. I mean, shows up big time in, you know, how you run business, mm -hmm. how you actually, you know, work with employees, how you work with, you know, partners or bosses or whoever it might be. So the thing is one thing that I want, because we didn't, I don't think we touched it on that much, but I want people to recognize this because I think it's important. If you think about when you're five years old, um, none of that was really there for you yet, right? Because, you know, whether you became a, uh, you became a vacillator or a pleaser or a voider or whatever it might be, you became that. So that means that in some shape or form, you learned that and over time it became this pattern, became who you are kind of a thing. At least that's how we look at it, right? Yeah. Now, if that's the case, if this was learned, guess what? You can learn a different way of loving and being loved. So yeah. that gives you so much power as listening to it. And now it just makes, you know, because now you're an adult or I don't know whatever listener is that, but it gives you more control, more power to be able to reframe that for yourself to love more from a secure way wow. that they talk about in this book. And when you get that, I think it becomes a lot more, much more empowering for the listener to go after this and I just need to be consistent in how we, you know, interpret that and keep going for towards the secure kind of a model of loving yeah. um, because eventually you can get there. And then those relationships are going to be so much more impactful in your life. Well, and you know, to some people listening right now, this may sound super soft, super squishy, like, ah, is it really that important? I would, I would challenge you a little bit um, to consider 
you know, this, the people stuff, the soft skills, the emotion, the, 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 the you know, cause listen, some, some people are all about like, Hey, I'd rather learn about how to scale my business. I'd rather learn about how to, you know, drop 50 pounds. I'd rather learn about something more, a more hard skill, mm-hmm. like how to, how to set up my Google spreadsheet analytics, whatever. But I think ignoring this side of the equation is a big mistake um, because everything in life is about relationships to some extent, whether it's uh, like you said, with your, with your business, with your friends, with your family, with your loved ones, like it's, it's, it's all relationships. And so as you have a better understanding and you can evaluate and, and weigh and, and have a better perspective on things, like it's going to show up as a positive effect, a net positive net effect everywhere. Yeah. It's a relationship with you yourself. I mean, imagine what kind of relationship you have with yourself, right? Yeah. In order to get the love that I'm looking for, who do I need to be? Right. And those types, I think, that she's talking about here express and, you know, tell you who you need to be in order to get that love. Yeah. So now, you know, if you were thinking, you're sitting here and it's like, this is stupid, this is boring or whatever, I don't need this. Guess what? You're one of the types. Yeah. Go check it out in that book, which right. type you are. And then you can see how you actually go and become more of the secure type that they were talking about in this book. Yeah, man, it's cool. And I know I've heard Kathy... Uh, I've heard praises for Kathy from our Life and Air students. She does she does a lot of stuff in Life and Air, and um, she actually won Coach of the Year this past year, and uh, she's been awesome. And so that's a, that's mm-hmm. a really cool thing for uh, Life and Air members to get advantage of. All right, well, listen, we hope you enjoyed this episode. We hope that you got something out of it. I hope we do something with it. You know, we say this every time, but really, this is where the rubber has to hit the road. Filling your head with all this great knowledge and information is one thing, but actually doing something and seeing effect and getting different results in your life is another thing. And I am in much favor of the latter rather than the former. So please leave us a review, leave us a rating, give us a thumbs up, tell somebody about this and help us change the world. All right, we'll see you next one.